Hey guys, what's up? This is Casey. Coach Tom. And this is Shot Science Overtime number 170. Um, you weren't excited that time. <laughs> um, Milena says, hey guys. Dan says, what's up guys? Jigsaw Genie says, hi. Kids Rojo says, first, good job. All right. um, just want to say welcome to the live show today. This is, again, not like a regular Shot Science tutorial video. It's a little bit longer. It's while we are here to talk to you guys and answer some of your questions about how to become a better basketball player. Right. Um, and what, what, you, what we usually do is we have a topic that we talk about at the top of the show that is something we think is going to help you guys become a better basketball player. While we're doing that, you guys send us your questions on anything basketball related. Right. It can be shooting, passing, dribbling, defense, how to talk to your coach, uh, athletic training, how to increase your vertical jump, whatever. Um, and that, uh, you know, send us those questions and then we'll get into those as soon as we finish our topic. Um, and we just do that so that we can wait for people to show up. We also want to let you guys know that you should follow us on all of our social media stuff <laughs> or do different stuff on all that, all those places. And we would love to have you there and be part of Team Shot Science. Make sure you check out shotscience.com where we have all of our our t-shirts yep. and stuff. Yep. Uh, you can also join the Shot Science All Access membership where we get really in depth and help you guys become better basketball players right. there and be, become better shooters. And, and that's where vertical jump stuff is too. Um, so make sure you check out shotscience.com. Um, okay, so let's get into our topic. Our topic for today is how to be an all-around threat <clears throat> in basketball. Right. So think about Russell Westbrook. Think about Magic Johnson. Think about those guys that kind of just do everything. Yeah, and, and you know, that doesn't happen by accident. Um, they spend a lot of time developing those skills. And, and you know, when we talk about becoming uh, a more all-around threat, we're kind of talking about... Uh, uh, having a shooting game, having a driving game, being able to post up, be able to play at the perimeter facing the basketball. Play defense, uh, that, yeah. rebound. Yeah, all of that stuff is really relevant to being a complete basketball player. And those who uh, are able to achieve that um, are really going to be uh, above the, the norm when it comes to playing the basketball game. And so one of the things that we always try to tell pe uh, players <clears throat> that we work with is this, is that uh, we want you to have more tools in your bag that will allow you to play in a different manner than maybe you do right now. Tools in the bag or these kinds of things. Uh, I have moves when I get to the basket. I have moves when I attack the basket. I have ways that I can take and uh, leverage a defender and get by them and get to the <clears throat> basket. Um, I can post up because I've spent time learning how to uh, uh, attack with my back to the basket. Those are all things that are really important for us. Now, here's the thing that I think is really important in this regard, and that is you don't have to have a bag of 50 tricks, 53, uh, uh, 50 uh, things that you can do. I think that most players, most high school players probably, you want to have half a dozen things that you can really do that are an adjunct to your game. Well, well here's, here's the thing. <clears throat> So many people get so caught up in, I'm going to be a shooter. Yeah. I'm going to be a, a passer. I'm going to be a three. I'm going to be a two. I'm going to be a defender. And they, yeah, they get caught up on the positions yeah. and stuff like that. That is the worst approach that you can have to your personal development as a basketball yes, player. Yes, it is. True. Because if you're so focused on becoming a point guard, you lose out on all the skills that go along with all the other positions that you could be developing that help you be a point guard, but also help you in situations where if you're on a team and there's two, maybe three guys ahead of you that play the point guard, then you, you will either find yourself not on the team or on the bench. Yeah. Um, and that's not good. You don't want that. But if you're the guy that can do a little bit of everything, you up your value as a, a, a point guard. Right. And then you also up your value as maybe you can step in and play the shooting guard yeah. or maybe the small forward. You never know. And then you become more valuable. And the coach sees that. It's like, okay, well, this guy isn't just a passer. Uh, you know, he can bring the ball up and he can create right. some offense. He can right. also shoot the ball. He, uh, he draws the defense to him and he opens up all the other players. If you are just that one-dimensional guy or girl, then you get pigeonholed and you get taken advantage of. Well, and, and a lot happens in high school basketball like this is that I can shoot the basketball. And I'm a really good shooter. I can shoot the basketball. Uh, can I put the ball on the floor? Well, I'm not so good there. And how come? Well, I don't really work on it very much. I rely on my shooting. Well, 
here's the thing is that coaches are not dummies. As soon as they realize that you have uh, uh, a shot. You mean the other uh, team? Uh, the other team, yeah. Uh, when As soon as the other coaches realize that you are a really good shooter, they're going to take measures to top, uh, stop you from shooting. And those measures are going to be is that you're going to have a defensive player who's going to be right up in your face. And so it's very difficult to shoot with any kind of uh, accuracy when you have somebody who is crowding in on you constantly. And so that's really important that we be able to do something else. And so I always instruct our players this way. You have to have a game that you can attack the defender off the dribble. When they are playing you close, you want to be able to attack and go by them either one side or the other. And uh, that puts them at a disadvantage. Just like you're put a disadvantage when they crowd you. When they play away, uh, you've got your shot. Well, now, you, so let me go on with this saying. And so if you beat them off the dribble, what do they have to do? They have to back up a little bit, which gives you a little bit more room for that shot. And so they're caught in kind of a tough place. How do I play him, coach? Do I get up on him or do I go to off him? If I get up on him, uh, he's going to go by me because I can't stay with him. If, if I play off him, he's just going to stroke the ball over the top. So we want players to have several tools, like I said, maybe five or six different things they can do besides the thing that they're really good at. If I'm really good at shooting, I also want to be pretty good also at attacking the basket with the dribble. Yeah, and you need to know that, especially when you get up into levels of like high school and definitely beyond, there is a scouting report and coaches are looking at tape, they're going to watch your games and stuff like that, and they know, oh, well, uh, you know, Dan Dabrowski, that guy can't shoot worth anything. So we're, we're just going to back off him and let him, you know, try to take Flail those away, shots. yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but if, if Dan Dabrowski, our buddy Dan over here in the chat, if he knows or if he's able to perform a shot, if he's able to attack off the basket – uh, if he's able to distribute the ball, that makes it really hard for the defense to contain him. Sure. And so you don't want to be the guy that has those weaknesses or vulnerabilities or girl. Yeah, uh, yeah Dan, we're, we're just using you as an example. Uh, <laughs> we, we respect you, Dan. <laughs> we, it's because we know you, that you're secure in your abilities as a basketball player. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, it's really important that you are that all-around player that can can do everything because if you can't, you get stuff taken away from you. So if you do have the shot, then they will take that away from you because they know that you don't have the attack. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. And, you know, sometimes you find players uh, on teams who don't like to be touched. Uh, and most people don't like to be touched. But you, there's a lot of that goes on in basketball. Okay. And so I remember a specific instance uh, a few years back where we had a player, uh, a guy who could really shoot the basketball really well. And uh, we just watched him play, and we noticed that when he was touched, he was always flinging the person's arm away. And so we put into our scouting report that we're going to touch him, and we're going to touch him the whole game. And what happened was we put a smaller guy on him and, and just said this, keep your hands on him, but don't hold him. And we talked about the back of our hand, which, you know, they almost never will call you if you have the back of the hand on there. That's when you have an open hand where you can grab a shirt, something like that, that you might be called on it. Um, and so he was so frustrated um, that he made two free throws in the first half, and he was averaging about 25 a game. And so we were able to kind of control him because we scouted what does he do, what does he like, what does he not like, and then we're able to uh, uh, deal with him. So if you're on the other side of that, he needed to have more of a game where he attacked the basket because – our guy was up close enough he could touch him all the time, okay? And when he didn't have the basketball, he's got his hands on him, and he's constantly flailing at the basketball. And so um, those are things coaches do when they find out what your tendencies are. So what you want to do is have more tools in your bag to allow you to do different things. Okay, so here, here is what we're getting at, you guys, is that we want you to scrub the notion that you are a specialist in anything. If you are a developing player, you should just wipe that away. You're not a specialist. You're not a point guard. You're not a post player. You're not any of that stuff. You are a basketball player. So just go in with that mindset. And now, how you become that basketball threat is this, is that you have a very comprehensive, uh, diligent, purposeful approach to your practice and skill development. 
instead of just going out there and having a shoot around or maybe working sporadically on your ball handling, maybe once or twice a week, you go in every day and you know you're going to be working on these specific things and you've thought it out beforehand. Right. Uh, you know, I'm going to work on my shooting. Uh, I'm going to work on my, uh, you know, form shooting. Then I'm going to get into some game speed, game intensity shooting. I'm going to make sure I put in some free throw sessions in between some of that. I'm going to work on making sure that I have some ball handling figured into there. Uh, maybe warm up with some static stuff and then get into some more dynamic movements. I'm going to have a passing segment where I'm going to have my mom or dad come out and we're going to throw the ball around and make sure that I'm working on that. Uh, I'm not going to look at the ball when I'm passing. I'm going to make sure my head's up and I'm looking away or I'm faking a pass to make, an, to make a pass. Uh, I'm going to make sure I get in and work on some of my post moves. Um, I'm going to work on my rebounding. And this is everybody. This is not just the guy that it, or the girl that is five foot one or the guy that is six foot eight. You guys should be working on the same things. Um, you know, eventually you'll get onto a team where you'll probably have a coach that says, okay, we want you to play the center position. Um, so maybe you do spend a little bit more effort on figuring that out during that time period, right. but you never give up on all the skills that are important to basketball. Yeah. You make sure that you are making this very purposeful approach and consistency is key too, right? Yeah, it is. Yes. Because if you aren't consistent, you might've worked on your free throws, uh, you know, on Monday and Tuesday and then come Saturday, maybe you have a game on Saturday and you try to take those free throws you're not going to have them there. They're just gone, yeah. Because you need to work on them every day. Um, and the same thing goes for rebounding. If you don't work on that, you're not going to be able to execute when you get out on the court. Right. So when when we're talking about oh, – I got this nice little stripe on my face. So when you guys are working on um, any of your skill development, you want to make sure that you have that list, uh, you know, shooting, ball handling, rebounding, defense, passing, whatever it is. Have that all figured out. Have – uh, a plan of what your drills are going to be that you're going to work on. Uh, maybe work in some of that stuff where you have somebody helping you out um, and change it up, but also make sure you're addressing each of those things every single day so that every day you're polishing each piece of your uh, of toolbox. Exactly, exactly. And you become a much more valuable player when you have the ability to do that. Um, there was a thought that I had here just a moment. Now it jumped out of my head, so I'm not going to waste any more time thinking about it. It'll come back to me in a little bit, maybe. So, I mean, that's it's one of those things where we, we see people and how they practice. We yeah. hear from kids and how they practice. And, you know, the thing is, is that you have to, if, you, if you're serious about it, if, you, if it's, you're just doing it for fun and you just want to, you know, play and, and, and do whatever, that's fine. You can do that. But if you want your skills and your abilities to keep progressing and moving on to the next level and being valuable to a coach and a team, uh, you should have that approach where it's, it's like you are getting down to business. Yeah. It's not just going out and shooting around or working on your, your horse shots or uh, you know, half-court hook shots. I mean, it's like you have a plan. And, and it's a comprehensive plan. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I would encourage everybody to do is this. <clears throat> the whole game of basketball is centered around one thing, and that is scoring. And that's, that's how they determine who wins the ball game, is the team that outscores the other team. And so one of the things that I've noted over the years is that um, teams oftentimes don't spend very much time as a team in shooting drills. And as a result... Um, you know, I'll ask players, do you, how much do you shoot in practice? I've asked a young man this morning that, how much time do your team shoot in practice? Uh, he says, oh, well, maybe we spend five or ten minutes in the course of an hour and a half or two hour practice. Well, for me, that's not enough. The game is all about scoring, and so we should be spending time really working on scoring. And, and, and learning how to shoot the ball, learning how to get to the basket and finish and, and that sort of thing. And so don't let that part of your game ever uh, fall off. And, uh, and you are responsible for your skill development. Yeah. And you'll go and play for coaches in high school and, and middle school and stuff. That, is not, that time is not about you. That time is about the team. So you need to know that you may go to ba basketball practice – uh, you know, for an hour and a half for whatever every day or whatever it is, but that is not your time. So you need to spend your time as well working on things outside of that. And particularly on shooting. Yep. Uh, you know, the thing that's really kind of interesting for me about shooting is I, I feel that is the weakest element in our game today 
particularly in the high school level. Uh, maybe that carries on up into the collegiate level. I'm not sure about that one. But um, people just don't know how to shoot the basketball, and nobody really takes very much time to help them learn how to shoot the basketball. And so oftentimes what happens is that uh, the most important element of the game is not there when we need it, okay? And so practice your shooting every day, every day. Yeah, and, and here in the chat, Momar and Daye says, some people say that specialist players are better than versatile players. What do you think? We think that that's bogus. I mean, yeah, they might these... be better at maybe some element of the game, but the overall game is the, the real measure of you and your team. Uh, can this guy rebound? Hey, that guy is a monster on the boards. Well, how about shooting? You know, he shoots that three ball really pretty good most of the time. I mean, look at all these guys that are the top players in the NBA. Because mm -hmm. those are all the people that we all know. Uh, Russell Westbrook, that guy, he does everything. Yep. Um, and look at Steph Curry. Even despite of his size, he is doing everything. He's out there playing defense, Rebounding. getting rebounds. Yep. Uh, you know, he can post up. Uh, Kevin Durant, another example. Same yep. thing. Uh, you know, um, there, I mean, the list goes on. Um, and, you know, most players, if you look at somebody like Blake Griffin or somebody like that, he's trying to become more all around himself. Yeah. You know, that's one of his criticisms is that he wasn't. And so he spent a lot of time in the off seasons working on his shooting and things like that to extend his range. Um, and, you know, when you when you uh, or Kobe Bryant, I mean, they're, they're, you always see him posting up and he wasn't a post player. Um, Michael Jordan, all those guys, they are all around players and yeah. that's what makes them great. If you're a specialist, I mean, that's... You might be good in that specialty, but other parts of the game are weak and, and uh, possibly you don't contribute much there. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's really the take-home that we're yeah. trying to get for you guys yeah. is be an all-around threat. And to do that, you have to have the framework to really build up to that. Yeah. Don't just be the guy or girl that goes out there and has a shoot-around and expect that to turn into, uh, you know, your lottery pick yeah. in the NBA draft. <laughs> um, okay? Okay, so are we good with that? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay, so we're going to shut down our topic for today. We are going to get into answering your guys' questions in just a second. Before we do, we want to do a couple of things. We want to tell you guys to go to shotscience.com and check out all of our cool stuff that we got there, like our shirts, and also uh, we have the, the jump box, which is a vertical jump training kit that we have there. Um, we have some uh, training gear that you can get without the box, but we also have the all access uh, Shot Science membership. So if you do that, we have full rundowns of things like uh, shooting, how to shoot, uh, the drills that you can work on. Uh, we have some vertical jump training stuff and that gets updated Every month we put new stuff into that. So go check that out and get a membership with the all access. If you use the access or the promo code, one free month exclamation point, all capitals, one free month exclamation point, you can get the first month for free. Yeah, that's pretty for cool. right now. That's pretty cool. So if you want to go do that, I would say now is the time because we don't know if we're going to shut that off right away or what. So go get that. Shot Science All Access. If you use that promo code in the checkout, then uh, you can get that first month for free. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and the next thing I want to say is this. We want to ask you guys our question of the week, which is what we ask every week, and that is this. Where are you in the world? Where are you guys from? Yeah. Um, we are in Santa Cruz, California, which is south of San Francisco, and we want to know where you are. Are you in Argentina? Are you in Japan? Are you in South Africa? We want to know. So tell us where you're from because we like to know where – uh, in the world that Team Shot Science is. And, you know, we do see a lot of familiar faces, but we still want to know. And if you guys are in a place that doesn't know much about Shot Science basketball, please go tell people. Like if you are Rhino Singh from New Delhi, India, go out and tell people to check out Shot Science. Um, we got uh, I'm a Boss, who's from Indiana. Momar and Dai is from Senegal. Lapointe is from Washington State. Martin Egbert is from Germany. Vibe739 is from Newport Beach, California, not far from us down south. Uh, the Triple X Trey is from Fort Myers, Florida. Christian Thompson is from the Bahamas. And Romar Rivera is from Puerto Rico. 0 0.13 is from Fort Smith, Arkansas. And Kevin Kolev, I remember that guy. He's, uh, he's from Ireland. Dan Dabrowski is from Philadelphia. 
or from Pennsylvania. Um, let's see here. Who else is here? Gates Production says, remember me from last time? I do. Where are you from? I can't remember. Um, Fran Tisek is from Slovakia. And 2841 Guillerme is from San Paulo or Sao Paulo, Brazil. Awesome. Wow. Keep telling us where you guys are from. We really appreciate that. Uh, but we're going to get into answering some more questions. So let's see here. Um, let's see. Christian Thompson asks, so shot science, this is a question. Why does Steph Curry shoot so well? <laughs> That's a real mystery, isn't it? Hey, Steph Curry spends so much time in developing his shot. If you go back and look at the, um, the history of him and his family, who were all basketball players, his dad was an NBA player, uh, he's, he was really not a very good shooter until one summer his dad kind of took him aside and probably his brother Seth as well, and they really began to work on breaking down the mechanics of the shot, and so that started to come to get, uh, get together. And as it, it developed, then he became uh, more confident in shooting the basketball like that. And, and then his game just kind of mushroomed after the shooting was there because then he becomes a, an outstanding uh, uh, ball handler and able to get to the basket uh, uh, really easy on, on people. The take, so the take it's, home just, it's just really all about spending time developing your skills. And even more important than developing your skills is making sure that what you are doing is correct. And correct meaning that they're not some little uh, f uh, gimmick gimmick or failures in there that keep you from developing that skill to a very high level. You should always be analyzing what you're doing and why, does, why are we doing this? Why does this make sense? Is, yeah. this, is this on the up and up? Right. Um, and, you know, just because somebody tells you that this is the way that it should be doesn't mean that you shouldn't be using your mind to see, oh, well, does that make sense or is that them just trying to make me buy into what they're doing. Yeah, you know, we see lots and lots and lots of students over the course of a year, and one of the things that, that we find is this, is that you will ask them, okay, what kind of ball skills do you have? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty good. Okay, um, all right, I want you to go to the end of the court, and I want you to bring the, bat, the ball back to the other end using just a cross dribble, and, and um, so they'll do that, and it's horrible. Um, and they don't have really good footwork, and they couldn't break somebody down off the dribble if they wanted to. If the other person was, was crippled, they wouldn't be able to break them down. And so one of the things that, that is really important is what Casey is saying is that when we are developing a skill, make sure that you are getting it uh, right um, because you don't want to have to go back up and start that process all over again. And to be very honest with you is that there are a lot of things that, that we do, and that we being always, uh, that probably could be a lot better. And oftentimes what happens is that um, we take the word of somebody that we think is a pretty good uh, resource and we do what they say and then it turns out that it's not very effective. So you have to do some research and find out, okay, uh, what is the best way to execute this this uh, uh, set shot and here, and here's or the, jump shot? And here's the other thing. Okay, we're talking about Seth Curry shooting. The take home is this. He spent the time and he yes. spent the effort and he was analytical of everything that he was doing. Right. That is how he got to the to the point that he is, and yeah. he was consistent. And uh, that's how you get to that level. When we're talking about taking advice from other people and things like that too, you just you need to make sure that you are being very smart about that stuff. And when people are saying, you know, uh, the best players in the world do this, or this is how so-and-so does this, that does not, that's not a point. That's not a point to be made. What is a point to be made is that you are looking at the mechanics of this. Does this make sense? Uh, is it efficient? Will it work for my body? Uh, you know, you have to realize that you are not uh, necessarily an NBA body. You are not the same body as Steph Curry. You are not the same body as you know, fill in the blank, Kevin Durant, you are yourself. So you need to start from the fundamentals and build yourself out. When somebody says, oh, well, the best so-and-so in the NBA do this. So but, what? Yeah. <laughs> You're not an NBA player until you get there. And you can, you and, can, you can make up yeah. a lot of ground doing something that isn't actually the best approach if you do it a ton. Yeah. And we don't think that's a good approach because we think that you can cut out a lot of the learning curve if you do it, uh, you know, in an appropriate way to start with. Yeah, and Casey's point I think is really a good one and one we use all the time, 
when we're teaching somebody how to shoot the basketball, how to dribble the basketball, uh, we take and tell them, okay, we want you to do it this way. Uh, does that make sense? And usually they'll say, well, I, I don't really get it. Or maybe, yeah, coach, that makes sense. And that's always our approach is that we want you to understand what it is we're saying. And does that make sense for you as a player? Okay, so let's let's keep it more on track <laughs> this time. Okay, this one is from I'm a Boss who says, how to finish better at the rim. We have a whole video called Finishes at the Rim. Yep. And that is really what we would say to go check out. There's nine different finishes for you to, to use when you get there. Yep. Number one thing to do when you get to the rim, though, is not panic, not throw up a circus wonky shot. Uh, it is to have kind of a few tools that you can do when you get there to be able to get the basket. Right. And the other thing is focus on the finish. Even if that yeah. guy's going to come in there and just blast you, work on finishing with the basketball first and if he hits you it's the foul but you you want to give the best chance that you can to get the ball in the basket just a special note on that finish uh, uh, focused on finish oftentimes players will put the ball up not knowing where to put that on the backboard when they shoot it and by the way we're not huge at all on uh, layups right over the front rim that's a really difficult touch shot. We have, a, we have a video on that too. Yeah, and what we really want to do is we want to put the ball on the backboard. Uh, there is a target box on the backboard uh, on almost every basketball um, backboard that you could ever buy. And when you're doing layups, we want to put the ball on the upper near corner. If we put the ball on the upper near corner, we're probably going to make 100% of those shots. What happens is that oftentimes we don't focus. We're worried about getting hammered or getting blocked, and so we're trying to juke the thing around a little bit, and we don't even come close to coming to that corner. We go to the opposite corner. We're right under the rim, and we hit the bottom of the rim. So focus on the finish is really, really important. Okay, this one is from LaPointe. He says, hey, Coach, I don't have a gym membership, but I do have a hoop in my backyard. Is it still a good idea to practice outside to play for an indoor team, or should I get a gym membership? Practice you know, outside, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. Most every kid in the world practices outside. And so if you get an opportunity to get indoors, I mean, that's an opportunity and take advantage of it. But, you know, outside basket, uh, basketball has been the staple. I bet every place in the world except maybe where you have inclement weather uh, most of the year. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is that we always talk about making it happen and figure it out. There is not a huge huge uh kind of adjustment from going from indoor basketball to outdoor basketball or vice versa it is basically the same game of course yeah. it's not the same feel necessarily on this on the pavement as compared to the hardwood but you know it's it's the same ball it's the same hoop uh you know most uh, most people they work on outside yeah most of them do um okay we got rhino in here saying that he's asked like a few times that uh, Rhino Singh, he says, I can make threes from long range with ease, but can't even touch the ring from half court. Why would you want to shoot from half court? Yeah, if you're playing for me and most every coach that coaches the game of basketball, a shot from the half court would get you a quick hook and over to the bench. You'd be done. Uh, now, that being said, there are certain situations like the one that Curry plays in is that they give him free reign to shoot that anywhere he wants to. But Mo there's probably going to be just a many, many, micro, many uh, amount of players that ever have that kind of latitude. And so uh, I wouldn't worry about that. I would really take and, and live around that three-point line if they're a really sh uh, good shooter from there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing, is that you get to a point of diminishing returns when it comes to mm -hmm. your, sh your shooting range. Right. Um, and if you're shooting way past three-point range, I mean, Why? it doesn't make any sense. It's the you same... It's the same uh, amount of points, and it's going to be a lower percentage shot. Oh, the percentage drops off just so quickly as you move further away from the basket. Um, okay, this one is from Angelo Abejero, who says, I have small feet for my height. I can run forwards very quickly, but going sideways and chasing a shifty player is very hard as my balance isn't, very, isn't really good because of the size of my feet. Any help? Okay, I can guarantee you the size of your feet 
matters zero percent in yeah. all of this. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to uh, do with it. What really matters is that you need to work on your uh, lateral athletic ability and your kind of just lateral movements. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that with, with things like uh, the ladder drills and, and dot drills and using the uh, resistance bands. I mean, we, we sell resistance bands in our shotscience.com store. Um, and there's a ton of things that you can do with that. Also, staying low and making sure you're using the proper footwork. That is really the key. You know, the footwork is something that is really often overlooked. When we are teaching people how to use defensive slides, and we're not only ones that do this, that you never allow your feet to come closer than, and you can't really see this distance right here, but any closer than two feet. As soon as the, the feet get close together, your body begins to straighten up, and then you become very slow. Keep your feet wider. And, and don't let your feet come together as you're, you're slide stepping. It, it, I mean, it's one of those things where your feet should never really get closer than about shoulder width apart. Yeah. Otherwise, you start doing that, that inchworm thing where you, you're going straight up, straight up, exactly. straight up. And yeah. you don't want to do that yeah. because your center of gravity goes the same, same thing. Yeah. And then if you have to actually make an, a, a quick movement, you have to go from high to low to do that. If you and stay it, low, you just you can execute it right out of that. And it's got nothing to do with the size of your feet. Yep. Nothing. A lot of that's one of the things that we see a lot of times is that people have all these excuses about their <laughs> physiology or biology and the the real matter is is that it has nothing to do with that stuff. You know, people say, "Oh, my hands are so small, I can't palm a basketball, therefore I can't dunk and I can't I can't, you know, play at the next level." And it's like <laughs> that is so not the reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't number one you don't have to be able to palm a basketball to dunk a basketball. No. Number two, dunking a basketball will not take you to the next level of, of any level of basketball. Right. You have to be able to do all these other things. Um, and, you know, when it comes to the size of, of your body, you don't get a choice in what that's going to be. Yeah, that's true. You know, your height is, is going to be your height. So you might as well work on the things that you have control of instead of worrying about the things you have no control of. Exactly. Okay. Um, let's see here. Ethan Davis says, how can I stutter step without being called for a travel? Well, you know, if, if this is something that is you're doing while you're dribbling, there shouldn't be a travel uh, if you're stutter stepping. Because you, when you are stutter stepping, you more than likely are not interrupting your dribble. What you might do in, in, is allow the dribble maybe to elevate just a little bit so you've got a little extra time for that stutter step. But the only way you can get called for a travel legitimately is you stop your dribble and then your feet continue to move, especially pivot foot. So the thing that's really important there, I think, is that it doesn't have anything to do uh, with. Um, I, I think one of it, one of the issues might be this: is that you're allowing when you when you do your your stutter step or your hesitation, you're allowing your hand to come underneath the basketball. Yes, yes, that's very so true. What might be happening is that you're in, you know, you're dribbling it, your stutter step to get that slow down, and you're allowing your hand to get into kind of the southern hemisphere of the ball. And as soon as that happens, that's a travel. Well, it's going to be a carry. They probably call it as a travel. But yeah, that's that's yeah. exactly right. Now, one of the things that we refer to that kind of a dribble is a crowning dribble where you're taking the ball and your hand goes under it partially or all the way and you lift the ball up and over and down, which is a really slow dribble. Yeah, so I mean, and we don't really know exactly what the scenario is for you. So I mean, that's, that's hard for us to answer that. But if you are properly dribbling the basketball, you can take as many little steps as you want. You could do a little dance in the spot if you wanted to, if you're dribbling the basketball. But when you collect the basketball up and you have it in your hands, and maybe that's what you're talking about, that is not really where you would do a stutter step. If you're trying to stop, you should be doing a jump stop. Yeah. Um, because if, you, if you're trying to stutter into that, yeah, that, that'll definitely get called. Yeah. If, you're, if you're talking about stuttering and they're calling you for a carry. I mean, that, that's kind of self-explanatory, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. Martin Egbert is saying, can you break down how to jump right or high and or high? Yeah, I mean, you can go check out our videos on vertical jump. I mean, we talk yeah. about we, – we spend – uh, most of those uh, of those videos talking about the proper way to train to jump. 
Uh, um, and to be able to jump higher. I mean, well, I mean, one of the, one of the things that you'll find in our vertical jump videos uh, are is this is that. Well, we shouldn't be talking about uh, maybe. Uh, well, we don't I'll, need to. I'm we don't let that we, go. We don't need yeah. to get deep into that. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing: if you are w wondering about vertical jump or how to jump or whatever, go check out the vertical jump exactly. videos. Go, uh, you can also get the Vertical Jump Handbook. You can go to shotscience.com. And again, we have the, the all access uh, Shot Science membership. If you get that, you can use that promo code that we talked about earlier, one free month exclamation point, and you can get a free month of that. We have a section in there that talks about Vertical Jump on that. Um, we also have the, we have the Shot Science Jump Box, which has all the Vertical Jump training gear that we suggest for you guys and that stuff. Um, and so that's like really what we would suggest you check out. Um, you know, uh, we could get into the particulars of that stuff right now, yeah. but it's like, you go watch the videos. We have yeah. all of that yeah. stuff yeah. there. Um, Michael Timzinko says, is it important to practice bank shots? Yeah. You know, it's, it's important to shoot all kinds of shots. Oftentimes you'll find that, like, I, I think the shots may be up to, to five or six feet from the basket if you're at an angle. The, the bank shot probably is the best to shoot. Uh, if we're trading, shooting right to the basket, that takes a lot of touch to be able to shoot that little short shot. That's just, I feel the same way about um, those teardrops and whatnot where you, you just elevate and you're only shooting the ball maybe four or five feet. That's, that's a tough one to put in the basket on a regular basis. And so I would say, yeah, from an angle on the side, if you're in close, bank shots work really good. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to bank shots, there is a very specific area yep. zone that you should be executing those right. uh once you get out of that zone it becomes quickly apparent that that is not a good uh target to use yep. uh but there is there's like that sweet spot on the sides of the court where doing that little bank shot the size is of nice. the backboard you mean yeah yeah what what no you said court well side of the court like if you're on oh, the right or on left the side angle. i mean yep. it's right at those angles yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, and if you if you want to be able to shoot that shot, you gotta do it in you spend practice. Spend time on it, right? Um, Christian Thompson says, "Is a thumb push always bad because Kyrie Irving has one and he is buckets?" Okay, here here's the thing. Uh, again, it doesn't matter if anybody else does this stuff. Uh, you know, it, you could say Michael Jordan does this, and you know he's the greatest player of all time shouldn't matter because Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. He spent all that time developing what he does. What we tell you uh, are the fundamentals, are the things that we know are the bare uh, essentials, the most efficient approach to getting you to the next level of what you're trying to do. Um, you know, so many people say, oh, well, if, if you're doing this and you add in a thumb because I saw so-and-so using a thumb that it's gonna make me a better shooter. That is not a good approach. Yeah. What you need to do is you need to have uh, the kind of approach where you are going towards efficiency and what makes sense. So when it comes to shooting, when you're adding in variables like thumbs and, and dips and all this other garbage, that stuff will affect your shot. It becomes another variable. It makes your efficiency drop off. You don't want that. Yeah. You want to have a shot that is efficient, repeatable, and you don't have all these other influences. The thumb thing, don't do that. No, you know, you're inviting uh, a disaster when you use that thumb. And that's and one of the things that, that is important to me and every shooter. We, we spent a session this morning with a young guy and he had the thumb uh, stroke with his off hand and the ball was all over. It was right, it was left, it was right, it was left. And uh, then what we told him is this, okay, we're going to shoot the ball with one hand. And he looked at me like, well, I can't do that. And, and I said, well, are you bothered by that? Well, my hands aren't very big. I said, well, they're big enough. And here's how I want you to hold a basketball. And we went over that. And I said, now, I want you to take and do anything you want with that hand. You can put it in your pocket, behind your back, whatever you want. But now we're going to take and spend the next 10 minutes, and we're just going to shoot that ball one-handed. And the first two or three were a little bit wonky and wide. And then all of a sudden, it started to come together. And every shot was straight, 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 straight. And, and so then we got back together. And I said, OK, now let's put two hands back on it again. And he started getting the hand off of it. It was still going straight. Then after working for a few more minutes, once in a while, he would take and shoot the ball and get the thumb in it. And the ball would go uh, off to one side or the other. So the, well, having that thumb on the shot 
at the release point is going to be a disaster for you. And, and here's, here's a couple of quick things too. Yeah. Um, and that is this, is that you can eventually be able to shoot pretty well if you have things like that built into your shot. Yep. But the, the thinking on it is this, why do that when you can do it without that and yep. get to the next levels uh, quicker? You know, uh, you could have that thumb be an influence and maybe Kyrie Irving did, but you know, he worked so hard to get that to the point where, uh, you know, he, uh, he could shoot like that because he probably didn't know any better. And, you know, that's, that's one of those things where he just worked so much and he got it there, D but you don't have to do that because you know better and you know that you can work on it without that being an issue yeah. and you can get to the next level faster. So don't do that as an approach. Yeah. Um, and you know, the other thing is this, you can look at, and you know, we, we've talked about the reasoning and the science behind it and everything, but if you need like a real world kind of uh, visualization of it, think about all the other sports where we are delivering balls to a different destination. And we're talking about football. If we're throwing a football, we're not going to have any other influence from the other hand getting involved in that delivery. In baseball, we're not going to have the other hand influencing that either. You got a glove on it. That's not a good thing. Uh, even in soccer, when you're throwing a ball inbounds and you're throwing it overhead, you are throwing it with both hands, but both hands have to be synchronized and touching the ball in the same spot. Otherwise, you get called for a violation or the ball doesn't go in the places that you want. So if you're trying to shoot a basketball and you're having a, a minor influence from one hand and a major influence from the other, good luck trying to get it to the right target yeah. with the right trajectory and the right spin and all that. So, you know, that's one of those things that we, we will take the time out to shoot that down yeah. because we just do not believe that that is a good approach. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it comes back to people saying, oh, well, so-and-so does it. Yeah. Should I do it? Or so-and-so does it and they're successful. Should I do it? That's not a good approach. Well, it isn't, especially whenever you think about how much time that person, possibly an NBA player, has put into developing their, their mechanics for shooting, dribbling, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that comes uh, back you to know, the whole Reggie in Miller thing. In, you know? in watching um, uh, Kyrie Irving, uh, uh, you know, and his ball skills, I see things that I think are not the best way to do it. But he is very crafty with all of that because he spent so much time on it. Yeah. I would say that when you come to the shooting and having that thumb on there, uh, that you take the time to get it off there because the ball will fly straighter for you if you do that. Yeah, and, you know, like we said, people like Kyrie Irving or – you know, let's go in extreme, Reggie Miller, mm -hmm. um, you know, even Larry Bird. I mean, all these people, they don't necessarily have the best, most efficient mechanics, but they made it work because they were working on themselves in a vacuum. They didn't have, you know, the internet or all these other influences telling them how they should do it. They kind of, you know, maybe they saw it on TV or they, they uh, you know, had a coach that maybe tried to help them. But that that is, you know, a different way to become a player than if you have all the information. Yeah. So if you have all the information, let's work on getting you there faster. Yeah, exactly right. Okay. Um, here we have Milton Lynn Dane who's asking, what's the best way to increase my vertical? Go check out our vertical jump videos yeah. and obviously the shot science all access. That's what we would say. Um, <laughs> this is for you maybe. This is definitely not for me, but Emerald Enter Ender Serial says, who is your favorite football team? Hmm. Huh. Well, uh, you know, I hate to say it this year, but uh, I'm always a 49er fan. Yeah, because we're from the Bay Area. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a football it, fan. So. not a fan. Uh, Francisic says, please live stream with Sarah from Talkie Fit. We will. Yeah, we'll do that. Yes. Yeah, she is. She's a charming lady and and a really an outstanding athlete. Really. Yeah, we'll try to get that lined up. We we shot some stuff with her a few weeks ago. Um, Romar Rivera says, I use the thumb not because of Kyrie, but it doesn't affect me, to be honest. Well, we, that, that may be true. Maybe you're not using it the way people do that are having problems. That's hooray for you. Whatever works for you, that's what you're shooting. I mean, you know, here's the thing. We're not here to tell you what to do. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we try to give you all the information. And for us, having different variables in your shooting is a great way to have your accuracy and consistency not be where it needs to be. 
Well, because if something is going wrong with that thumb or, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're having it affect your shot a little differently or whatever, it's going to be that much harder to figure out what's going wrong than if you have efficient, repeatable shot. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're not in the place where we're trying to tell you, you shouldn't do this, but you should do that. We take and put that information out there for you, uh, for your use if you choose. If not, your choice all the way. Okay, this one is from 0.13 who says, how to increase confidence in a 12-year-old kid? Wow. You do it the same way you do in a 16-year-old kid or an 18-year-old kid. They have to take and uh, develop their skills so they develop some confidence in the things that they can get done when they play. Um, and it, it's that simple. And now there is no magic switch on their back that you can flip and say, okay, now he can do this or he can do that. What you need to do is he has to spend time or she has to spend time really working on your skills. And now uh, probably a perfect example of, of that is um, Jalea and her ball skills. Mm -hmm. And you may have seen her on our channel from time to time. I, I, she's seven or eight years old. She's seven years old. Jalea Manuel, if you go to our, our Facebook page, she has like 70 to 80 million views on videos. Yeah, and she's just an uncanny ball handler at a very young age because she really has spent a ton of time in it. And that's how you get better in any of this. You yeah, spend well, time. Well, here's, here's the thing. People are always asking us about confidence and stuff. Sorry about the lighting, you guys. Uh, but they're always asking about confidence and uh, nerves and things like that when they sip on the floor. One of the things that you will find is that basically everybody will struggle with confidence and nerves at some point oh, yeah. or yeah, all everybody. the time. You yeah. know, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. And if you feel like that's something you're having problems with, you are not alone. That everybody. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to getting uh, more confidence and kind of reducing the nerves, what we think is the best approach to that is you need to work on your skills, like exactly. you're saying. Exactly. Because if you have confidence in your skills, you have confidence in the execution of those skills when you need to. And that's really the thing. Like You're not going to be nervous if you know, oh, I'm going to be able to get that shot off. You're not going to be nervous. But if you're like, oh man, I'm going to turn the ball over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess up. I'm not going to get the rebound. I'm going to I'm going to make my coach upset. I mean, those are the things that make you nervous and, and work against your confidence. So yeah. have your skills be where they need to be. That That's work that you do before you get to the court. Well, yeah. And then and, you'll be better off. Well, and the other thing that comes into play with that same thing there is this. Uh, I'm afraid I might fail. Yeah. Okay. And what am I afraid of uh, failing? That they'll take me out of the game and I won't be able to play anymore. Okay. I have to get out of this game and I don't get to play any more of this game. And so you have to get beyond that. And uh, number one is, like Casey said, develop the skills so that you feel confident in it. And then you have to use those skills. You know, I was talking to a young player yesterday, and, and um, our team happened to play against his team a week or so ago. And I said, you know, in watching you play, I kept waiting for you to shoot the basketball. And I know you can shoot it, okay? And well, why didn't you shoot it? Well, I was afraid that I'd miss it. Oh, well, there it is right there. I don't perform in game situations because I'm afraid that I'm going to fail. And I said, and what would happen if you failed? Would you have to leave the game? Well, maybe. And so their fear of having to be taken out of the game because they miss a shot maybe or take a poor shot. Hey, you have to take uh, um, a chance. Here, here's, 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 uh, this is exactly right. And you know, it's, it's one of those things where you have to change your mentality yeah. as a basketball player and understand that you are not going to be successful a hundred percent of the time. Let's look at Steph Curry. That guy shoots 40 plus percent from behind three point range. Right. Uh, you know, he, he, he probably shoots, you know, even higher, uh, closer range, but the fact of the matter is, is that he's missing at least half the time. Yeah, more and than half the and time. And he's yeah. taking that shot. Uh, LeBron James, he's missing at least half the time, if not more. Um, and you know, it's it's like those guys are taking a chance or a risk, a 50-50 chance at least every time that they take a shot. Yeah. So why can't you take that shot? I mean, well, you you have to understand that missing a shot or turning the ball over or whatever is all part of basketball. Yeah. You don't want to do that stuff, but that's, you know, it's like you won't get the the reward if you don't take the risk. Exactly. And the, the risk may not be as great as you think it is either, because coaches know that uh, unless you take a, a, a poor shot, uh, you take a rush shot, you take one where you're, you're actually uh, contended and can't get it off, 
um, then they'll probably have something to say to you about that. But that doesn't mean the end of your career. Don't be afraid to shoot the basketball. I read a quote the other day that I really liked, and, and it was had to do with shooting. And, and it went like this. I've seen it before, but it happened to ring a bell with me this time. And it, this is, don't shoot for the takes. Shoot for the makes. And don't be afraid to shoot. Yep, and, and that's that's one of those things that uh, Dennis Stanton says: yeah, yeah. shoot to take, not or shoot to shoot to shoot, make, not to take. Exactly. Um, and you know, it's it's you can't be responsible for if if you take a really good shot and you worked on getting open and creating the space and getting the opportunity. If you take that shot, you are not responsible for the miss. Yeah. Uh, but if you take a shot where a guy's all over you and you just kind of fling it up and it's like a, not a good time in the shot clock or whatever, that is on you. Exactly. That's a real mistake. Yeah. Um, and that's one that you should be working not to make. Yeah. Okay, let's let's move on. Okay. Um, and the take home is work on your skills, get confidence in your skills, yeah. um, and then change that mentality a little bit. Um, Martin Egg, Egbert, uh, he's the guy that was talking about the vertical earlier. He said, I watched those videos, but it didn't, I didn't get higher. It, it's not about yeah. watching the videos. Yeah. No, no, it's not. You got to spend the hours and hours of working on that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I could watch a hundred videos on basketball and that doesn't make me a better basketball no, player. not at all. Not so at you all. gotta, you gotta put the time in. Yeah. Um, let's see. This one is, uh, Rhino Singh is asking Warriors versus Cavs today. Who do we, who are we going for? We're going to go the Warriors, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're from the Bay area. So, I mean, we've been warriors even when they were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. This one is from Jalen DeBaller who says, Hey man, my shot is really broken. I think it's my form. It feels really uncomfortable when I shoot. What should I do? Well, one of the things you can do is, is, uh, go look at our videos on shooting and then take a video of yourself shooting the basketball and see, uh, compare them and kind of see how it looks to you. Because one of the things that we often do is we have some little ugly uh, uh, thing in our shot that makes us not effective and we're not aware of it. We can't see us through our eyes. We've got to see us through a video, some another piece of equipment's eyes. And then, oh, okay, I didn't realize I was doing that. And so when you do that, then you're going to find, okay, I think I'm going to modify that so it looks like that one right there. And pretty soon you start to find that, hey, that thing's starting to fall, starting to feel really good. And, and here's the thing, too, is that you, you were saying videotape, or you know, we don't even use videotape no, anymore, but no. uh, if you record or film or video your shot, uh, you know, get, get some different angles, get the flight of the ball in there and yeah. everything. But you have, uh, you probably on your phone or somebody's phone, your mom or dad's, you should have a slow motion feature on your phone. Right. And if you're out in bright sunlight, that'll look very crisp and nice. And you can get slow motion footage of your shot. Right. And, and you take it from uh, the front, the back, and both sides. But you, okay. should, you should be able to take that footage and you should be able to look at it Compare it to maybe the stuff that we have on Shot Science or, uh, you know, some of our shooting stuff or whatever, or look at it yourself and be like, wow, um, it looks like my release is kind of going off to the side a little bit or I'm pulling my arm down. Uh, I didn't notice that I was doing that. Then you can go back and you can fix that. And that all comes back to you learning to be your own best coach because anybody can go through the motions and just play basketball yeah. But the best players are the ones that can go in there and they can they can figure out how to fix what they're doing wrong, how to uh, up it to the next level. Uh, they just know how to coach themselves because if you're relying on other people to coach you, good luck getting anywhere. Yeah. One of the things you can do also, you can take that same video and you can take and uh, uh, post that up for us. We'll take a look at it for you. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Okay, I just want to jump into this. Septa fan is saying, why did you stop putting free stuff on YouTube? Now you just put stuff up recommending your products, but I still love these uh, overtimes. You have a podcast on this. Shout out to Philly. Okay, here's the thing with, with uh, all the video stuff. We have been focusing a lot on, this is like real talk. We've been focusing a lot on Facebook and trying to build that out just because YouTube has been doing some different things on their platform that has made it hard to focus all of our time on there. So we wanted to make sure that we're kind of growing in different places too so that we don't lose all you guys because yeah. we don't know what the, the future is of YouTube or whatever. Um, and so we've also been building our website so that we have a place that you guys can all go that we know is going to be there. And that is? And that's shotscience.com. And 
you know, the thing is, is that we do have products and things on there and it's, and we're, we don't just put those there because we want uh, you guys to buy them from us just for our own edification. Like we put them there because people have been, been asking, asking us to, them, do, yeah. to put them there. Uh, you know, we put all the training materials there because we get questions about, from people saying, you know, what are the best ones? And, you know, we put together a list and we would just, you know, say, hey, you know, these are the ones that you should get or whatever. But, you know, these are the ones that we went out, we picked, we made sure that they were of high quality. Uh, you know, Chase went through and made sure that they were all the best ones that we could possibly get. And the other thing is, is that if you guys get a shirt and you get some of this other stuff, it helps us keep doing all this stuff yeah, too. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, we would love to be able to do everything for free and do everything for you guys. But I mean, we have to focus on this to be our, you know, what we do if we're going to put all of our time into it. Yeah. So that helps us. And then it also helps us if you guys wear the shirts and stuff around because it helps spread the word of what shot science is. Yeah. Um, and, here, and here's what our kind of our plan is too. We are putting together a new little studio backdrop that we're going to start using and we're going to start doing more YouTube videos again and more uh, tutorial stuff. One of the things that we're probably going to do is we're probably going to release most of the videos uh, either a month or a week early on on our our website and then release it onto YouTube. So we want to make sure that people are that are going to our website are getting this stuff early uh, because we think it's important to make sure that we grow the team there and that the people that are really into shot science are getting that stuff first. But we don't want to get, take away from YouTube. So we will continue to make YouTube tutorials and stuff. We're just kind of gearing up to make sure that we do it all in the right way. And we spent so much time. We were building up all the other platforms and then we built our website because we wanted to have that ready. And now it's kind of time to start getting back to you the stuff that we were really into. So hopefully that's a good explanation. We're not trying to, you know, be we, salesmen, you know. No, but, not really. But, 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 you know, when you spend as much time as we do on this, especially Casey, there has to be some kind of monetary reward or it's not worth doing it. Yeah, well, I mean, we just, we, we really, we want you guys to help us too. Like we want you guys to all be part of this too. So um, hopefully you guys will go check out uh, you know, the, the website and just, it, just see if it's stuff that you care about. I mean, that's really cool. Um, okay. Let's see. Was somebody asking about rebounding videos? Because Dan is saying they do have rebounding videos. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. If, you, if you go check out, uh, uh, some of our playlists, we have stuff on rebounding. Um, Rhino Singh is saying, I do a step back three, but it's called for a travel. Why? I don't know. Uh, it might be it might be because you're picking the ball up and taking too many steps. Well, if you pick the ball up uh, and you've established a pivot foot uh, on the front, let's say, and as you're stepping back, you pick up the ball and then you put that same foot down, that is a travel. That's a tough one to kind of figure out, but that's usually what it is. <laughs> and our buddy Dan Dabrowski is saying, speaking of products, how about some hats? <laughs> how about them? Aren't they great looking? That's cool. We, we will try to do that. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where the hats, they, uh, they're a little bit different than the shirts and stuff, but we'll try to make that happen, Dan. Um, maybe send us an email and we'll try to figure that out. Um, let's see here. This one is from not a YouTuber, good, good YouTube username, mm -hmm. uh, who says, how to keep control when doing layups on the fast break. Don't always get correct footwork. Oh, you know what's really interesting about that is that um, if you learn how to do what we call inside hand layups rather than outside hand layups, that will account for you using a different foot and is really pretty effective. I, we have a video, I think, on that, don't we? The inside hand and outside hand videos? We, we have a video called Finishes at the Rim, and we talk about doing inside and yeah. outside hand layups. Yeah, exactly. But go look at that on, on Finishes at the Rim because... Oftentimes what happens is that when you get to the basket and you're ready to shoot the lay and you're going off the run foot, wrong foot and it feels really out of balance and uncontrolled and all that. But if you learn to take and go ahead with the footwork maybe you're using, like if I'm going into the right side of the basket uh, and I, I'm putting the wrong foot down, I'm putting my right foot down to jump off of, go ahead and do that and just go up with the inside hand. There's a lot more to this. Uh, but I'm not going to take and spend the time right now. Just go look at that video. Yeah, and you know you can also go look at the uh, Layups 101 video yeah, because yeah. we talk about the footwork that goes into that. Um, and you know one of the things that people don't do usually, uh, one of, one of the things that people do is they try to force their 
when they practice or are learning something, they, they try to force it. And they try to say, you know, maybe they saw it on TV or they saw somebody else do it and they try to make that work. That's not really the best way to do it. You should really take the fundamental stuff, break it down and work very slowly. And literally yeah. one step, two step up, one step, two step up and like really break it down. So it is that slow, that meticulous. With, and then Without a dribble, you know. Yeah, that's one of the things that when we're learning how to shoot layups that I think is a real thing that we miss is that they're thinking about shooting and they're thinking about their feet and it's just very confusing. When you take the ball out of it or the, the uh, dribble out of it, now they just have steps and it's really easy for them to do. We do that and then we'll go back two steps, then three steps, then four steps, and then we'll have them do it with a, a, a dribble. It is amazing how they put the ball up and finish. Now, one more thing that I, I can't remember the exact language on that, but one of the things that causes us to be a little bit out of control on layups, especially when we're going hard, is that we have a tendency to shoot with our hand behind the basketball when we shoot it on a layup. Those are overhand layups. We like to teach everybody, if we can, to shoot underhand layups because we don't transfer a lot of run-up speed on the back of the ball whenever we shoot uh, like we do when we're shooting with a hand behind the ball. As soon as our hand comes under the ball, then we find that the shot is very soft. In fact, oftentimes you have to give it a little bit of a boost to get it up there. Yeah, so if, if that you, would probably help a bunch. If you guys go look at the uh, lay -in, lay -in, Layups 101, and then we have the lay-in run-up drill, mm -hmm. which is ex explaining exactly what you're talking right. about with that stuff. Uh -huh. And then we have the finishes at the rim. You will get kind of all of the info on what is really important in developing kind of the, the proper footwork and then the execution. And then you can also go check out a video we call uh, Never Miss a Layup Again or Never Miss a Layup. I can't remember and the title on that one. On that one, we talk about uh, not going over the front rim. Oh, yeah. And it's about mm -hmm. laying it up using the backboard because right. one of the most embarrassing things you can possibly do in a basketball game is go up and miss a layup, an yeah. easy open layup. It, yeah. is, it is not – not fun and you so, never live it down people do not forget that yeah i mean i still remember a few from buddies that that missed some <laughs> that were very important shots um and you know i mean go ask patrick ewing i mean he he has one from 20 23 or 24 years ago that i still remember <laughs> so uh remember you want to make sure that you are putting all those pieces together building it out very slowly and meticulously and you will be in very good shape Okay, we're going to answer just a couple more. Adam March is saying, are the Shot Science apparel out? Now I need it. Yes, they are. No, if you go to shotscience.com. Yep. Um, okay. Um, we have a couple people in here that are talking about, uh, like I'm a boss, is telling Jalen to start with the basics, shooting with the acronym BEEF. We are not fans of that stuff. No. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where – I know what people are trying to do with that. They're trying to have simple, easy cues where they can, uh, you know, quickly recall the things that they need to be doing. We're not big fans of that because mm -hmm. we think that when you are putting together your shooting mechanics, you need to be putting them all together and getting all the muscle memory and everything in place using all, it's not just a four letter acronym amount right. of things. Oh, it, it is, absolutely it is a pretty, it's kind of a little bit longer of a list. It's a right. complex movement. So you should really be building that out in practice and working on getting all of that stuff working together. Yeah. Uh, beef doesn't explain it all. No, it doesn't. Uh, Not even close. It no. would probably be more of a sentence <laughs> if you were to put it all together. Yeah. Um, and so we think that you should really just work on building all of that stuff out, building up the muscle memory, because once you step on the court and you're playing in a game or you're playing horse or whatever, you don't want to have to think of cues or think of things like beef to get your shot no, going. No, it's uh, all about developing the muscle memory so that the brain really doesn't even have to think about it anymore. Yeah, you really just, you need to have it all in place beforehand. Stepping onto the court and then relying on things like acronyms and things like that, not really the best approach. No, no. Um, okay, so... Let's see here. We're going to, I think we're going to wrap this up. Um, let me ask just one more question here. Uh, Money King, this is a good one. Money King is asking how to shoot while moving slash running with the basketball. Well, you know, you don't want to be shooting while you're running. One thing that you really need to be is be able to be stable. 
and not have any movement in any direction except for vertical. Um, what happens is if I am running full speed and I just pull up and launch it, all of that run-up speed is pretty much added to the back of the basketball, and it's just going to take off on you. And so uh, one of the things we think is really important is footwork to create uh, uh, the stability for your shot, and it also helps you maintain balance when you shoot. Balance and stability is one of the most important or two of the most important uh, components of shooting, shooting. And, and we talk about making your shot efficient yep. and as simple as possible yep. and limiting variables. When you have things like directionality and, and things like that added into your shot, that makes your shot that much more complex and harder to execute. Yeah, absolutely. So you want to really focus on making sure you're getting that good stop, gather footwork, one, two, yep. stop, gather footwork. You're uh, basically making yourself stationary, shooting at the stationary target, instead of being uh, moving and trying to hit that stationary target. Well, a great way to kind of verbalize this too is it, let's say that I'm cutting across the face of the basket from left to right, and I wanna pull up and shoot a jump shot. If I don't have very good footwork when I do that, my body, when it goes vertical, then begins to slide in the direction that I'm going. So when we use really good footwork, we're able to stop the body, gather, and go vertical for the shot so we are not sliding in any direction, which affects the accuracy of the shot. Right. Okay. okay. So before we get out of here, we want you guys to, again, answer this question for us, which is... Where are you from in the world? We want to know. Yeah. We want to know where you guys are from in the world because that it makes us excited to know yeah. that you guys are in all these far off places yeah. and you're you're joining us as part of team shot science it also makes us feel good when we have people who are, are relatively local let us yeah. know where they are in any area uh salinas or whatever yeah anywhere um uh and our second question for you guys before we get out of here is this we were talking earlier today and the topic was uh how to be an all-around basketball threat what is your strength as a basketball player and what is your weakness that you need to work on to become an all-around basketball threat? Right. So let us know the answer to those questions. Where are you from? And then what is your strength as a basketball player? And what is your weakness? And how are you going to work on it to become an all-around basketball threat? Very cool. Very cool. Um, we want to thank you guys all for being here. Right. Thanks, um, guys. And we would appreciate it if you would go check out all of our social media stuff. We are Shot Science everywhere. And we do different stuff on all of our different pages. Make sure that you do check out shotscience.com. We got so much cool stuff there. And if you guys are interested in doing the all access membership where we, we go really in deep, in depth on all of our shooting and all of the different stuff that uh, we teach, you can use the promo code one free month exclamation point, all caps as the, the code at checkout. And that will give you a free month to check it out. So please repeat that one more time. Casey. One free month exclamation point. Um, and we would love for you guys to go check that out. So check out shotscience.com. Thank you guys again, and we will see you next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.